Amen. Good afternoon. I thank God I'm finally here. So, the last podcast, I was really dozing. That many of the things I was saying, I was just praying to God, please don't let me say rubbish. So, if even if there was one rubbish in what I said, sorry. <laughs> but I thank God that it was successful eventually. I think it was like the team didn't want me to do it at all. So... But God gave me the grace I was able to complete it. And now, we are here for the continuation. And I know this time around, I've slept, I'm, I'm fully recovered. So we are here to continue. So I have slept and my eyes are widely opened now. I want to think the reason why I slept like that, I was feeling sleepy was probably I didn't sleep well in the night not that I didn't sleep throughout the night but you know those kind of things that you are not preparing for and you just sleep off so I just woke up that same way in the morning as early as 5 so I think my body was requesting for the sleep so we thank God we are here and this topic this second session is very powerful I had to go and listen to some videos about it on YouTube because I was just like God what will I say but it's God that gave me the topic so I was just like let me just listen to people let me just but then everything I will say we still have to be guided by God because there are always a lot of things to say but by the time what you are saying is guided by God then you are the you are the one that is doing it right so I'm not saying people that talked didn't say it God's way. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Me, personally, right now, I don't want to base my decision or my words on things that are coming to my mouth because people said it. I want it to be based on what God wants me to say because only God knows people that will listen to this. And only God knows their hearts. Only God knows... Those things that they will hear and they will answer up and say, God, I give it all to you. So that's my point. <laughs> I think I have to always explain myself so that I don't give wrong information or wrong or cause people to feel, ah, what is she saying? Why is she talking like this? So hope you understand me now. Yeah, we thank God. Let's pray. Father, most high God, I appreciate you. Thank you, Jesus, for being the only God be magnified in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we come for this podcast, we thank you for the last one and even for many more you have helped us to do in the past. And this is like another phase where we have to do it immediately, share immediately, which we have not been having that grace for some time. So I see that this is another kind of phase, a different one. A progressive one. Father, I give all the glory to you, Lord. Father, Lord, please help us to complete this 14 today. All the glory will return to you. I will really be grateful. King of glory, please have your way. Jesus Christ, please take control. Everything I'm going to say, please guide my words, guide my deeds, guide my thoughts. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, these topics are crucial. They are important. They are spiritual, they are not just entertaining, like you just do something to make somebody laugh, no. These topics are topics that, the spiritual part of everyone, the soul part, that part that is not revealed to people, the one that is beyond the physical, those parts of us that we don't show to the world, that is what you are helping us to talk about here. King of glory, as we are here again to discuss it, I need your power. I need your spirit. I need your grace. I need your wisdom. Father, Lord, please give everything to me. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, and I'm also committing everyone that will listen to this message into your hands. King of glory, people want to hear from you. Not me. Father, please speak to everyone's soul in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God, let it get to the rightful part in people's hearts. 
in the name of Jesus. Let it be the one that will bring people to yourself, that people will hands up and say, Lord, I give it all to you. Not me, but you, Lord. Father, please let this word of God go in us. Let it save souls in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, have your way. Take control. Take charge. We have 14 sessions. This is the second one. We have 12 more after this one. Father, please help us. Take all the glory at the end. Let all glory return to you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. <laughs> I'm beginning to take my prayer serious. Because I see that I cannot do it on my own. So we thank God for that grace. May God's name be praised. So we want to talk about uh, sex soul ties. Sex soul ties. Sex soul ties. I'm saying the third time. <laughs> we all know what sex is, right? Or maybe some people don't know. <laughs> okay, let me explain. <laughs> okay, sex is that most intimate gift you can ever give to anyone. Which, if you are giving it to every decanary, anybody that comes your way, anybody that makes you feel like you want to sleep with them, or anyone you are lost in after, then you are not wise. You are very foolish. You are a man that lacks wisdom. Just like Proverbs chapter 7 says. So that is the most intimate gift you can actually give to anyone, whether you are a man or woman. So forget about it that it's only women that should be giving their bodies to only one man. No. Everybody should be giving their bodies to just only one person. So don't be the type that you are just giving yourself to everybody that you see on the street. It's wrong. It's not correct. It's demonic. And a lot of you guys are now doing it nowadays that you will sleep with Olosho, you call this guest Olosho, and yet you treat them like trash, you treat them like they are nothing, but then you sleep with them. <laughs> Can you see the insensible thing that the devil is making you to do? You're sleeping with somebody that you call dirt, someone that you, you, you trash with your tongue, someone you treat so badly. But then you are giving your most intimate parts to that person. I don't understand why people don't get this thing. That is your most intimate gift. It is your secret. You know, like something that is supposed to be secret to you. We all have secrets, right? We all have that thing we don't want to share with people. That even if we share it with people, then that person must know so much about us, right? Now, that most intimate part of you, you are sharing with somebody you don't even know. And to now make it worse, it's with somebody that you consider as as dustbin. It's somebody you consider as trash. It's somebody you consider as public toilet. You're just throwing yourself away to a public toilet. You, are don't, you don't have sense. You lack understanding. You lack wisdom. You lack knowledge. You are, you are a fool. Sorry to say. If those words are very harsh, but... I'm saying them, I'm using them so that you will get how much you have, how much what you did is so, is so senseless. So maybe if I say you are a fool, you will get it. Like, it will ring in your brain that, ah, this thing is foolish, true, true. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will let you understand. That's why we have prayed ahead. I pray that the Holy Spirit will let you understand that what you are doing is foolish. It's not correct. So that is sex. It is the the part of you that you can't easily walk out, uh, open to the whole crowd, open to the, in the whole world, and be showing it to people that look at my private part or look at my private part. Then now you are giving it to somebody. You understand? So it's like this person is seeing you in and out. Let's go to that Genesis chapter 2. Verse 24 and 25, to see. Therefore shall a man leave his wife, his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Then that verse 25 says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. 
boss i'm looking for that place that they say you understand and shall be one flesh so what is he trying to say he's trying to say that they 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 expose themselves to one another my most intimate part that i cannot be going around in the street and be opening it to the whole crowd when you see a nude somebody who is who is naked maybe online or something you know somebody tells you that this thing is not right now you get it now now that's most intimate part that you can't just be going around sharing opening it to everybody you are sharing it with that one person and God didn't plan it that you should be sharing it with different people. You understand? And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Do you see it there? They were not ashamed because they were, they already, they were already in marriage. God already joined them together in marriage. He blessed their marriage. Nowadays, people want to jump steps. You understand? People want to jump steps. They want to just see you in one day and then sleep with you. When you do that, you are you are foolish, like I said. Maybe I should use those words so that you will understand. And what do you mean by foolish? Something that is that lacks wisdom, that lacks knowledge, that lacks understanding. Something that you are doing that even if a baby that doesn't have sense, someone with brain disorder will do and you'll be like, ah, ah, what is it that you are doing? But you can still have sense in some other things. But the Bible is saying that you don't have wisdom. You lack understanding. Like you don't you don't know the danger of what you are doing. So that is what God is helping us to bring out. God is helping us to call out those dangers and for us to see it. And more reasons why we need to stop it. You understand? So that is it. We have explained what is sex in the in a very spiritual way <laughs> let's put it that way then let's go to what is soul tie now what is soul what is soul before you now go to tie <laughs> i think let's do it one by one what is soul soul is that part of you that is you look at it today that part of me that is talking is my soul that is talking that part of me that listens to people is my soul but you can see my hair, you can see my eyes, you can see my mouth, you can see the physical. We all take care of our faces, our bodies. That is body. But the part of us that is in us, those parts that meditate, those parts that understand things, that part of us that is not physical. You see somebody who has shape, who has breast, who has nyash, who has big uh, buttocks that is the physical but who is this person really that is the soul the soul is is whom that person is what that person is made of is this person the always angry type and these are the things you men don't want to find out about a lady before you sleep with them and it's very wrong when god created sex he created it so that after you have known somebody, always take your time to know somebody. We will still discuss a topic, how to avoid divorce. We will discuss this thing I'm saying more in that topic. God wants you to take your time to know someone. That is why the Bible says he will find a wife. But nowadays, men don't want to find a wife. They just want to jam any woman and sleep with that woman. They later start struggling with the problems of what this woman is giving to them. Are you seeing how foolish the devil is making men to be nowadays? The devil is, is causing danger in the world now. Some of you feel like you can't control your eyes, you can't control your body. You can. It is possible. I will discuss this on this uh, podcast channel and everything. That it is very, very possible to control yourself. It is very, very possible for you to control your eyes. Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to behold iniquity. Which means it is possible. 
You are just uh, being careless. You know, when you are careless, then you, you don't, you think you can't control yourself. If a lady is being too attractive, or let me say seductive, there's a difference between attractive and seductive. If a lady is being too, uh, what do they even call them? They'd be like, you are sexy. If a lady is being too sexy, you carry your eyes and close it. You close your eyes or you take your eyes away and look somewhere else. If it's too sexy and you can't do without sleeping with her, you can't take your eyes without sleeping with her, take your eyes off. What is attracting that wants to make you have sex with her without knowing her is not godly. It's something that will destroy you. So that is what we mean by soul. We were explaining what soul means before we went to all that long discussion. Now, what is ties? Ties is... When you bond two things together, you understand. These two things are not supposed to bond together. Or maybe they are even supposed to bond together. They will now bond them together. You understand. They become one. You see, it's the, the Bible told us in that uh, Genesis 2.24, it says, And they became, and they shall be one flesh. You understand. So what is he trying to say? Ties What is he trying to say? Ties is when a man and woman are becoming one flesh. You understand? According to God's standard, like the way God created Sex, we have discovered what is sex. That is giving your most intimate part that you don't, you don't, you keep seeking from everybody. There's nobody that will finish dressing up, even as a guy, as uh, much as you people want to show your private part to every woman that you see in this life. You still cannot finish dressing up and then let your private part be outside. It's not possible. People will look at you like, are you still okay? So that is what it means. Like, are you okay when... Everybody you don't know, every lady you don't know. Even the lady by, by the second morning, you are pushing her out, you are telling her she's trash. You are pushing her out of your house like she's trash, like she means nothing to you. You understand? It's, it's not sensible. It's not sensible because that is the most intimate part of you. That is something you should not be sharing with anyone, anyone except that one person. That is God's standard. So what are we saying here? Ties is when you make something to be one. It's just like when you mix salt and water together, you know, it becomes one. You can't even see this salt, but you taste it in that in that water. You are getting what I'm trying to say now. Except you now use some uh, chemistry kind of thing, you know, all those chemical stuff to separate them again. You understand? So what are we still trying to say? We are trying to say that there is ties <clears throat> that is formed when you have sex. And there's no way you want to do it. A lot of you only feel that it is the going to the altar to go and get married to somebody that actually ties you with somebody. No. Sex ties people. That, and it's not just your physical body. It's not as if by the time you sleep with a woman who has big breasts, big neck, then your body starts becoming big and no. That's not what it means. It is the soul. It is the whom you are. We have explained it in that part where we explain what is soul. So, what is now sex soul ties? That is the tying of whom you are. That is tying of whom you are to another person when you have sex with the person. Because that is what God planned sex to be. God planned it that these two people... From nowhere, they didn't know each other. So they started trying to know each other without having sex. Then by the time they see that, oh, I can actually build my life with this man. The, the, our destiny is the same. Our goals are alike. Even if it's not the same goals, but it supports what I do. I like what it does. We can, 10 years to this time, we can still be together. 20 years to this time, I still want to be with him. Because nowadays, people don't even look at all these things. That is why you see them 
one year, two years, they have divorced. Because the reason why they joined together was because of the sexual intercourse. You see a lady, you feel this is this is uh, what you like. You go on and sleep with her. But you never allowed your destiny to align. You didn't check in future, do you want to travel to some other countries? Because that was what I told the particular guy who said he wanted to marry me from the blues. You know when somebody just come from nowhere? You have not built any relationship. You have never discussed about our goals, our dreams, our ambitions. You don't know anything about me. And then you say you want to marry me. And I told him, you don't even know anything about me. You don't know what I love to do in two years' time. You don't know where, I, which country I love to live. And I'm like, okay, if you want to marry me, let's take time and know each other. But he doesn't want to take time to know me. He just wants his marriage now. If you don't want to marry me now, then I'll go meet somebody else. And I told him, this thing you are doing is dangerous. If you are doing that with every girl you see, you will end up with a lady who is, who is negative for you. You understand? So what are we trying to say there is that God didn't plan it that you should just jump somebody or maybe even marry somebody for some Christian uh, people. They'll be like, oh, I, I want to marry now so that I can be able to have sex. No. Don't let your reason for going into marriage be because you want to have sex. And it has a purpose. It has a reason for that. <laughs> and the reason is because by the time you... you um, going to marry because of sex without knowing this person you will you will meet you will meet that those things you're supposed to take time to know about that person you meet them in the marriage you start being like i never know this is whom you are all your eyes that were closed before that were like hey i cannot i cannot do it oh i cannot manage i cannot stop i cannot wait let me just marry let me just marry you will see it later that now you want to start learning about this person. Now you now want to start knowing much about this person because at that time all your body will calm down. No, I know why. Your body will eventually calm down. But your body is supposed to have calmed down before you go into the marriage. God isn't designing that you should marry and then break up. It's not the will of God. We have a lot of topics that we support what we are saying now. Uh, there's a topic coming up saying... Uh, lost is not love, or love is not lost, something like that. Because people think they are the same. I've seen people that will be like, eh, I like a physical picture. I, no, it is the soul you should like, because it is the soul that we join together in sex. It is the soul that we, we bring goodness to your life. It is the soul that you will be relating with. When you talk to people, it is a soul that replies you. It is not the physical body. So don't let your relationship always be about physical. Okay, I like the way she touches me. I like the way she I like she sees. I like no, don't be. Don't be that kind of person. That is why we have channels like this that is talking about soul things that people don't don't really take time to know. You understand? Because a lot of people are always about the physical, physical, physical. So when you have a channel like this where God is revealing secrets, soul and spiritual things, I think that is what we all need more. So what are we now trying to say about this sex soul type? We have defined the three words and we define everything together. We have defined sex, we define soul, we define ties and we define soul ties. That is when your soul is being joined together in in sexual intercourse. Not only in sexual intercourse, but today's topic is in sexual intercourse. Then we define sex soul ties. It's where your body and soul, actually your body also joins. Even your spirit joins. You understand? That is why you can sleep and dream about this person. I'm not saying that you can't dream about somebody you have not even had sex with. It's possible. But in that sexual ties, it's even more. You understand? Because the soul was joined. The spirit was joined. You see each other in the dream. People even see you together in the dream. You understand? It's because you have been joined together in the dream. Although some of you, you might be leading each other into hello. Inside a fire or in the dream, when people see you, you understand. But then, that they are seeing you together, it means your, your spirit is connected. And another thing about this is that people actually think it is love. Because I can tell you that the last guy, or let me say the, the guy I was talking about that felt he loved somebody else more than me, when God told me that everything about us was perfect, is actually what God himself wants relationship to look like you understand and god made me to realize that 
it was the sexual ties between him and that girl that made him to think, oh, it's love. So what am I trying to explain again in this second part of this explanation is that sexual tie will make you think it is love. It's going to be dangerous for you. It's going to be um, hurtful. People will see that this thing is not what you need, but you cannot see. Your eyes are blinded already. And it's one of the things we are learning on this channel, so that we don't just jump, we don't leave the right things that we need and jump into things that are ephemeral, ephemeral, flimsy, flimsy things. Let's go to this First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an allot is one body? For two seeth he shall be one flesh. Do you see that? So some of you will think, and I just sleep with her, I don't have any relationship with her. The Lord is telling you that you have become one flesh with that person. So no, ma no matter your excuse, no matter leave me alone, which part of leave me alone you don't understand, just like how that guy was really talking trash from his mouth those days. But thank God I don't have any so sex so tied with him. It was just a connection. You know, it's possible to have a godly connection with somebody, a good connection with somebody. It's possible. Without sex so tight. Sex so tight is so powerful that it's destructive. It's like, how do I use this connection? When somebody who is stronger than you holds your hand, you understand? And then he's pressing it. He's, he's pressing your hand. It's painful, right? You are feeling like, oh, don't do this to me. You are hurting me. You understand? You are all seeing my hands. You are all seeing my 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 feelings, but then you are staying there. It's destroying you. You understand? And I want to say something about how God planned marriage and relationship. It's to make you free. By the time you are in a relationship, and you don't feel that you are free. You see, these are all the things that. God saw in that relationship with that guy because I remember that the God was telling me the qualities, the freedom. I don't police him around. He doesn't police me around. It. We don't. You know, you are free to. Then you can be at any distance from each other, but the heart is together. It's not the one that you see a new person today and then you suddenly forget about that first person. No, it's not like that. You understand. It is, it is that kind of relationship that is pure, is holy, is free. It gives you freedom of, of, your, of your destiny. You can actually go on with your life. Like, if you want to study, you can still study. You know, some relationships today, the man will be like, you can't do this. You can't study. You can't, you know, those kind of um, body that they put on one another. You understand? But when it is pure relation like God wants, it's going to give you all this freedom. But when it's, it is sex so tight, like joined you, without you taking time to see if your destinies are lying, if this man is the type that will support your destiny, or ladies too, sometimes a lot of men too, they need a woman who will support them. You, the man, you have not even checked if this lady supports me, if she encourages me, if she She's in line with my destiny. Some of you marry people that are not in line with your destiny. And then you start uh, getting yourself worked up. Why did I marry this person? Why did I marry this person? You understand? God wants us to take our time to check all these things. Not just jumping. Not just uh, going to the last thing. Stop doing that. Stop meeting a lady in a day and then you want to sleep with the person in a day. You have discussed how to overcome temptations. If you are still struggling with it, I think you should go and uh, you should go and ask God for the grace. Let's read another Bible passage to explain to us how sex so tight does. Uh, Genesis chapter 34 verse 22. Okay, let me read from verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when she came, the son of Hamon, the Evites, prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. Did you see it? And he saw clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. 
And she came to speak unto his father Amos, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. You see? What am I trying to bring out from here? Is that sex so tile is destructive. Do you know that this man eventually died? They eventually killed him because it was not supposed to be to defile. Any relationship that will, that will make you want to make somebody else defiled. It's not a godly relationship. It's a destructive relationship. They said the soul clave and he loved that. I, tell, I, I like how the Bible uses the word lust and love at the same time sometimes so that we can understand. Some, some, a lot of relationships online, thank God people are sharing it now. Very destructive relationships. You, don't, you look at it, they are not helping each other, they are not progressing, but then they cleave there. Say their soul is attached. It's not love. We have discussed what is love according to the Bible. And I want to tell you, that is the only definition about love. Any other thing that is destroying you, is, is not allowing you to move forward, and then you are saying you are cleaving to this person, you are staying with this person, you are not in love. You are just uh, doing yourself. So what is the Bible saying here? He said the soul cleaves. So it's telling us that there is something called soul ties that will destroy you. You see, this man was eventually killed. They even asked him, come and do circumcision. Circumcision that was very painful, that they don't even do in their country. He was ready to do it because he, he, he felt that it was love. It's not love. Sex should not come before love. Sex should not come before knowing somebody. Sex should not come before marriage. When it's coming before marriage, it's going to destroy you. The man will may be beating the girl. The girl will be like, I can't leave him. He will beat him today, tomorrow he, she comes back. You know? That is the sex soul ties, which is destructive. May God help us. Maybe later, by God, will God will still give us another topic to discuss more about what love he really is. Maybe it will be in another topic because we have discussed what is love according to the Bible. So, I think another topic we explain that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God that has gone out. When I started, I was really like, God, what am I going to say? And here I am, you have taken all the glory. Please be magnified in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, please, the word of God that has gone out, please let it do wonders in our lives. Let it bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you.